Y'all, I hit record. Oh my God. Well, we had been podcasting and talking for like 15 minutes and I thought that I had hit record, but I finally hit record and we are back. What's up? I'm Eric Esteban and what's up? Chris Mateo. And we're back with miscellaneous and Brown. Chris, you're back. How are, how was Hawaii? It was, it was everything Hawaii needed to be. And then some, um, I got sick, like in the beginning. I don't know if you could still hear it, but in the beginning of my trip, it was kind of weird. I felt like a bad head cold and then eventually got better. And so, but I think it was just Hawaii that cured me, right? To being out at different beaches every day. I was in Waikiki the first half. The second half, we were at Aulani, met up with more family. So it was just, it was all very much healing. And the fact that it wasn't 150 degrees like it is right now in Sacramento, that, that was a nice little break. So very yeah, glad I that I experienced it, but... Um, even more glad I'm home. Well, I mean, I, I, we missed you last week, but at the same time, you lined up Abby to come. Abby Eusebio, the Midwest director, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the director of the Midwest chapter of Phil Amps for Harris. Yes. Oh, Not Phil Amps for Biden anymore. We, it, we, we, it, that, wow. Because I, I was, I, we were talking in the pre-show. Well, actually, we were podcasting, and I forgot to hit record. But we were talking in the pre-show about how I've been posting those videos, those miscellaneous and brown season one videos. Those like little ten-minute snippets where I did like, almost like a daily show esque kind of monologue where I had like snippets from the news and would comment on them and make jokes about them. And I have to say, man, I'm, I'm, I was rewatching some of those, and I was like, wow. This is an outlet that I might need to take advantage of and do again. So I'm gonna be. I'll watch out for that. We'll be, we'll be uploading it to the same spot here, the One Two Productions, uh, uh, YouTube channel, and then maybe we'll we'll upload snippets again at um, on Instagram. But I'm gonna. I, I definitely think I'm gonna. I'm gonna start that up again because. Yeah. Why not? I, think, I know you'll be chatting with Michelle from our comms uh, team. Uh, I think that'll be something I'll bring up with her, but you should definitely bring up to say, Hey, I know that you guys have a TikTok now. I think it'll be fun to have some type of produced video that's really um, short form, but definitely something that you could easily produce and be like, Hey, how many minutes can I get? What are we going to do? Like maybe blast it like one, two, three things. And here's Eric's take on it or something. Just an well, idea. I already, I already have a few ideas for there. the TikTok. I cool. wanted to debate with myself as a uh, Filipino uncle that is a Trump supporter, you know, and the debate with myself, you know, but I'm yeah, yeah. the Filipino. I probably shouldn't say that on our podcast because somebody's probably going to take that idea and then put some filter on their face and steal my jokes, but that's yeah, fine. It's okay. <laughs> but at no, least you know, they're, no, we're fine. They, they no, won't I, will say, I will say that, that I definitely want to do some stuff with Phil Amps for Harris um, yeah. We do have uh, Melissa Ramoso, who's the direct, the national director of Phil Amps for Harris, as well as Michelle Armour, who's the East West East Coast uh, Communications Director, or what, what is her title? She's, for she's, uh, for head of, uh, she's heading up comms with uh, Marilyn, and so the, they're the the dynamic duo for comms uh, for national so national comms directors, or yes so they're they're so doing everything so I, to be like and we have both of those lovely ladies coming to our podcast and we will interview them and they will help tell you and guide you how to become part of phil lambs for harris and be a part of this wonderful movement so that we can have a real big zoom like everybody else no we had a nice zoom did you uh, were you at the zoom for phil lambs yes. for harris that was nice there was like four yeah. five hundred people in there it was a nice group of people in there yes and so we had close to 500 folks join but um, it was record breaking also because if you guys notice all the representatives that showed up, we did not have that kind of turnout of elected officials, Filipino elected Well, I don't officials. know that there was even, were they even in office four years ago? You know what I mean? No. This is, yeah. this is recent developments that, that was inspired by all of the stuff that you guys have done and all the hard work you guys have done in, 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 in community outreach and grassroots and, and you, you inspired people to start running for office. So that y'all didn't even need a comedian or any entertainment people. You had a, a whole docket of, of all stars of elected Filipino American officials. It was brilliant. It was really inspiring. And it's also inspiring because, you know, one of those elected officials was my boy, Steven Raga, you know, and I was, I was doing karaoke comedy, uh, online pandemic fundraisers for him, <laughs> you know, during the pandemic. So, and now to see him in elected office and him still being the only, 
Filipino to ever be elected to office in New York. Yes. It's a, that to me is still a trip, but uh, we, we need to remedy that and we need to duplicate Stephen Raga and, and we'll talk to Michelle Armour more about how they're doing that on the East coast. But, um, but yeah, I mean, being here on the West coast, you know, I'm starting to work in with, um, because Abby said that there's a bunch of people running. There's, there's of course, Isabel Gerardo, who's running for city council. There's uh, Robert Bulatow, who's running for city council up north. And then you have, of course, Jessica Coloza, who's running for state assembly. I mean, yeah, we have a lot of, we have a strong, and then, of course, our attorney general, soon to be governor, if I have anything to say about that <laughs> shit. I'm going to say right now. Oh, I mean, you know what's great about being on that film for Harris thing? When As soon as Rob Bunta came on, I thought I was going to be the only one, and I was going to be like crazy talking about he's our next governor. But there were a few, there were a few folks who were clipping that homie's going to be our next governor. And yeah. I have to say, to be honest, I've seen him speak before, and I've been a part of Zooms with him before, but I've never really like almost heard his stump speech. You know what I'm saying? Like I've never got to, and I felt it that that during Phil Ams for Harris, that 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 uh, what was it last Tuesday? Yeah, was it last Tuesday? Time goes yes. by so fast and so slow when you smoke a lot of weed like I do. <laughs> but they're without weed. It's just time is just different. But yeah, it's it a trip. Of- well, it, there's so, and there's so much news coming at us all the time. Like we had to talk about uh, the uh, NABJ, the National Association of Black Journalists. And that a whole, uh, I don't even want to say, because part of me is almost like, like there were a lot of people who are against Trump even being a part or being invited because their whole theme of their convention was miss, you know, uh, fighting against misinformation. And then you have like the king of misinformation uh, as your guest. But, um, but at the same time, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody interview Trump in that way asking him actual hard hitting questions where he has to answer for his actions and his words, you know, I don't know. And, and then continuous follow-ups and continuous badge, not, I, I not want to say badgering, but at the same time, a- Angie Stone is her name from ABC. The lady who is, who is, who, who really hit him hard. I, I was happy to see it, to be honest. I was really, that was what I was really, I really enjoyed. And you, you, you saw what happened. He, he, you know, decided to pull the birtherism 2.0 card and say that Kamala Harris just decided that she wanted to turn back. <laughs> what the fuck are you even yeah. talking about, homie? What, yeah, what, not, everyone, what? not everyone can just spray paint the, the color that they want on their face and then call them that color. Like, well, not, and not even just – she can be Indian and have a South Asian Indian descent and also have – African descent and and Jamaican descent in the case of her specifically in her in the case of her father and then you have like guys like Jesse Waters on Fox talking about well she's not technically African American because you know she's uh her, her father's from Jamaica and I'm like okay if you're going to determine the amount of blackness or authenticity if Jesse Waters is your barometer for authenticity authentic black person I don't I think you might need to check your source is what I'll say on on that stuff. I mean, I, I have to. I, I know I want. I, I I I specifically wanted to bring this up only because this stuff happens to me. You look at my miscellaneous brown. That is yes, it's a joke. But as with all jokes, there are two sides to the coin. There's a tragedy part to that joke, and the tragedy part to that joke is. My whole career, there have been white people or people in in authority trying to tell me who and what I am. And when Trump did it in live time, trying to be, oh, yeah, well, oh, where's your birth certificate? Or go back to where you came from or all these other things that he says and his his mega cult say all the time. I heard that shit growing up. That stuff is it's almost like a PTSD type of thing for me when 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 he when he does that stuff because my whole like i said here's my first comedy special it's called miscellaneous brown because that's what i was yeah i was a miscellaneous brown guy that you just oh he looks indian enough he'll let let him play a native american let him do this let him do that let him do this it was benefit for me in in as far as that goes but it was still 
you were an outsider. And that's yeah. all he's trying to do. It's the same thing he did with, with Obama, where he was like, oh, well, where's his birth certificate? He wasn't born here. It was this, or he's Muslim. or he's this. It's just an othering. Because when you're base and all you have to go on is racism. Yeah. You know, I, let's just be real. He's just racist. I, I'm tired of people sugarcoating it. I'm tired of people saying anything. And to me, if you're going to support Donald Trump, you are supporting racism. In mm-hmm. its purest form, period. You're, you're, he's racist. He is a racist. Yeah. And and you see what happens when he gets pushed into a corner. He falls back on racism because that's what racists do. Yeah. Which uh, you know reminds me, I, I I'm looking so forward to the the debate. Uh, all you think it's going to happen? You think he's going to show up? I think one of them he'll have to. I think he'll just be. But it's just going to be, I don't know, he's going to pull something, but I don't think he can avoid just doing one at least. Um, I don't know how he's going to do it, but it's going to be sensationalized either way. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to, I, I can't wait to see that um, happen. I mean, well, again, I feel like, well, you know what, here's what I, I think, because, you know, that this has happened before in, in the Georgia debate with uh, Ossoff where he challenged his Republican challenger to a debate and homie said, no, I'm not debating you. And then Ossoff had, you know, an hour or whatever it was on the local television station to talk and uh, the press uh, or the moderator just asked him questions. And he basically had the hour and a half. And if, if Trump doesn't want to do the ABC debate, give comma the hour and a half of national television to, to talk to uh, all of America and tell her what, tell, tell that, tell us what she's going to do. I'm yeah. fine with that if he's if yeah. he's too chicken for to to face her on ABC, and then you know what else you should do? Say, okay, cool. I'll go to the Fox debate and go into your lions then. But this whole live audience garbage, nah. We're not doing the whole Roman Coliseum. You know, fill it up with your cultist people, and then they scream every time she opens her mouth. Nah, I'm I'm I, I, I nobody needs to see that. But yeah. a debate on the same parameters as the ABC one that you agreed to with the Biden at Fox. I don't see why she shouldn't. I'd yeah. say, go ahead. Cause she'd still wipe the floor with him. Yeah. It's just true. Yeah. And then she'd have to wipe the floor with the moderators too, because they'd come at her as well. And that's fine too, because then you show you how, how adept this wonderful woman is and how good she is on her feet and how, how well deserved she, she deserves your vote to be president of the United States. So yeah. I'm fine with it if she if they put her on Fox. Go ahead. Yeah. Because I, I know that she could survive it. But I mean, we're here. It's Monday, and they've already announced VP picks. Yes. And I know it's a little bit early in the podcast to talk about this, but we can yeah. have a short podcast today and then another one next week. And then we because I know that there's gonna be news every every day. Every day. Every day. Every day, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be news, especially now. You know what? Before before we go into the VP picks, let let's talk about your plans for the Democratic National Convention because I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Okay, okay. I think you're gonna go, but you got to get your internet signal and your your camera right so that you can be our correspondent from the DNC only because I got a new job. Oh, I got a job bartending at the Burbank airport and I'm scared to say it out loud. Cause I haven't got my fingerprints yet, but yeah, I got a job bartending at the Burbank airport, like either early mornings or late nights. And, um, that will be what? a nice part time gig that so I won't be able to go out of town in the next two weeks. Yeah. Cause I'm starting a new job. So I'm pretty sure I probably won't, be able to go but we are going to have to figure out you know a a, a correspondence thing because i know you're going yeah because with phil Amps for harris you're going so you will be our correspondent are you going to be on the floor yes yes <sighs> i am part of the uh, credentialing committee so i'll be there for that and then uh i was just told by our co-chair for phil Amps for harris um i'll be um helping out with uh helping credential um folks from all over the place. We're expecting well, a ton of people. I think right now we're at about 50 Filipino delegates that will be coming from all over the country and we'll be um, housing them for the first time ever. Just so <clears throat> I share some news. Um, 
This will be the first time that Phil M's for Harris or any Phil M's uh, campaign will be partnering with the DNC. And we're going to have our very own, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll be having our own hospitality suite uh, at the Marriott, specifically hosted by Phil M's for Harris. And so folks can come in, meet with us. We might have snacks. I don't know if they're going to make me cook lumpia, but I'll do it if they need to. Um, but we're going to have, it's it's going to be pretty sweet. And so uh, to have that space, we're going to have debriefings. We're going to talk about uh, Filipino voter outreach, API voter outreach, those types of things. Uh, and our leadership will will be there throughout the week. So it's going to be uh, pretty epic. So, so you're going to have to, you're going to have to, uh, uh, I'm going to, we'll probably just end up going live on Instagram then for some there you go. of the for some of the stuff where I will just, I'll tag you on Instagram or you can tag me on Instagram and be like, yo, I'm, I'm with Rob Bunte. He wants to talk to you and we'll go on Instagram live and we'll talk and we'll, we'll just yeah. post it on the Instagram. But yeah. also I think, I think we should definitely like when you're in the hotel or whatever, we will, we'll, we'll figure out and schedule time so you can give us updates from the DNC. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Cause That'd I feel be like I, as much as I want to go, I mean, it's my hometown, Chicago, and it's probably going to be another time where I'm missing my hometown. Yeah. But again, I, I think starting a new job, I don't know that it would be a good idea. Yeah. To, don't mess that up. Don't mess that up. I, I mean, and again, hey, who knows? I, I'm getting my fingerprints tomorrow. Maybe I might not have the job. So you never know. So maybe I'll be unemployed. And then I'll be like, hey, Melissa, let me fly me to there and let me let me take advantage of the concierge suite in the Marriott. So, you know, but... um. Part of me also wants to do it like this because I feel like you would, you know, whenever you have a, a, a chance to get back to us and, and give us an update of what's going on. I mean, I maybe even will do some live um, where where I'll, I'll set up my iPhone and go live and watch the the coverage of the DNC and we'll we'll watch it all together on Instagram. You know, like we'll do stuff like that. But but uh, yeah, I'm thinking about trying to just upgrading everything because you know, having those joke videos, doing, doing some videos like I did in 2020 um, and, and doing some videos where I use news clips like I did back because there's a lot of people doing those style of videos now and mine are still funnier four years ago than theirs are currently. So, yeah. you know, there's a space for this and I feel like you know, I know that I can do it and I know I'm pretty good at it. So between us podcasting all the time, live updates from the DNC, those videos, you know, it's going to bring more traffic to this podcast and more traffic to this channel. But also, you know, I think it's going to help us, you know, get everything else, the things that we want for this podcast and the things that we want for the message that we're trying to get across during this podcast. So totally. I, it's going to all, it's, a, it's all going to help itself. Um, but yeah, man, let's let, so, so if you are a interested, where would someone go if they were seeing this and they were like, I want to go to the Democratic National Convention. I want to be a part of the, the, you know, that I want to be a part of Phil Amps for Harris. How mm -hmm. would they, where would they go, Chris? Give them the plugs right now before we continue the conversation. We do like a, almost like a commercial break for Phil Amps for Harris. Where would you go? What would you do to, to, to get involved if you wanted to get involved? It's all social media. If you guys just jump on to at Phil Ams for Harris, all one word, F-I-L-A-M-S-F-O-R-H-A-R-R-I-S. -R -R That's uh, our, our handle for Instagram, where you'll see most, if not everything that we need to post. Uh, we'll be on uh, Facebook. For those who want to get a little more in-depth uh, information, we can post on there. But Instagram is going to be your starting point for everything you need to know about the this campaign team. Uh, I know we have a TikTok, uh, so you can uh, probably find it through our link tree on Instagram as well. But once you get to the Instagram, that's where everything's going to be. Our stories are, we have at least two or three daily on there. And then you can get in touch with uh, me on here uh, if you need to. Uh, and then you I'll can get in touch with me on here. At Chris Mayo Mateo on Instagram. I forgot that this is mostly an audio, but... Yes, at Chris Mayo Mateo, but uh, at Phil Ems for Harris, we'll have all the information you need, all the updates, especially for DNC. We're going to have, like I said, we'll have a hospitality suite, uh, data briefings. Uh, every day we're going to have uh, staff there to be able to interact with you and answer questions. 
uh, press will be invited to come through and, and talk to us if they have interviews for our co-chairs, our communications team. Um, and then, you know, as, as we're pushing through, and I know Melissa will mention this when you interview her later this week, um, but definitely for donations and contributions, because this isn't free and a lot of this stuff will be coming out of pocket for a lot of us that are um, going to be there to, to support it. Um, and uh, however you guys can, can support, uh, Melissa will probably be able to uh, provide more. But in terms of being involved, volunteering, if you're going to be around, we can all use uh, volunteers to help out. Um, we should have the ability to get credentials for uh, folks that are volunteering specifically for us. So if you are in the area and able to help out, we'll find a way to, to get you there for at least part of a day or something and just enjoy that experience because not everybody gets to. And so we'll be able to, to help out those that, that help us out uh, during this time as well. So we'll see you guys uh, in a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks starting on the 19th and we'll be leaving there on the 23rd. You'll make me want to go. I mean, I do want to go. I, and it's not like I don't want to go, but I think, like I said, I feel like I don't want to get everybody's hopes up and say, oh, we're all going to the DNC. And then I I have to work and I'm not trying to, you know, I need this job right now. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, maybe, maybe if yeah. some of y'all would sponsor us, I wouldn't need a job. But at this <laughs> point right now, I need to get a part-time job. And that's fine. It's fine. That's the ebbs and flows of finances. And that's just... That's life. It's no big deal. Um, but uh, I'm definitely excited for you. But I think I'm going to be, I went from being very, very scared, but hopeful that Biden would win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like before he dropped out to now, like this feels like 08. Yeah, this feels like cultural phenomenon type. She captured the zeitgeist type stuff to me. And I'm not trying to say we won already because there's still the debate. There's still the VP pick. Of course, we'll talk about that because obviously this is the day because they said it's coming out tomorrow. So I might as well put my pick in and, yeah. and, and give my final. This is who's probably going to be. And you can come because I was so smart about JD Vance and being scared. <laughs> yeah. Was that an overestimation and a leap on my part? I was wrong, dead wrong, because I really only saw, I was like, oh, this is the guy who beat Tim Ryan in Ohio for the Senate seat. And yeah. I thought I liked Tim Ryan and I really didn't listen to JD Vance. I just saw that he was funded by billionaires Peter Thiel or whatever. And he's basically your, uh, you know, created in a, in a, you know, Silicon Valley tech bro, you know, politician lab. This, they yeah. created JD Vance, uh, you know, this really just zero cares, <laughs> zero, zero charisma. And, and as a, uh, a, uh, a spouse of a white woman. If my wife ever had a, my husband is not white, but sentence come out of her mouth. Are you kidding me? Asha, is that her name? Asha, Asha, come back, come back to us. Cause you know, this is not the man you married. This other man, there was a man that was a never Trumper. And he was talking about how Trump was the Hitler of America and all this other stuff. And now he is childless cat lady. And I feel like, to be honest, I don't know if, you know, whatever rumors are true. When I look at J.D. Vance. I know that the Phil Ams for Harris can't say shit like this, but I can say shit like this because I'm a comedian and, you know, y'all are just having me come on as a, and a bystander to y'all's help and just to help y'all and say shit that will bring attention to our campaign. And what I will say is that dude, like uh, uh, Chelsea Handler said, he looks like a couch fucker. He just does. He looks like when he was a tubby teenager Maybe not even a teenager, maybe even a, 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 a big a man, like when he was a grown ass man, but he looked like a dude that would do some weird stuff like that. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. 
It's all weird. It's all weird, right? It's so weird. weird, man. He's such a weird. And now that's the perfect. Can I just say that is the perfect comeback to everything they're doing. Like everything from Trump talking about Hannibal Lecter. And I have a theory. I just, I, I want to, I was going to play the video of this girl who talked about word association and Trump and how he's not really, I mean, obviously we know he's not that smart. And he always talks about Hannibal Lecter when he talks about letting in people from Mexico that are from the asylum, from the insane, insane asylums. Right. Yeah. And what yes. this lady proposed in her video, and I, so I wish I could give her credit, but I, I, I didn't find it before the podcast and it's coming up now. But she said, and I, I fully agree with her, that this fool thinks when people claim asylum at the border, they're coming from an insane asylum because he doesn't know asylum means they're under duress in their original country and they're coming to America for an asylum for to, to, to as a as a refuge a refuge a ref, refuge, right? Yeah. They're a refugee, which makes them able to acclaim asylum. But I exactly. feel like this fool thinks these people when he says they're from crazy places, he thinks because they're claiming asylum that they're from. An yes, asylum, yes. and that's yes. why he brings up Hannibal Lecter and his friend from the yes. asylum. I'm, 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 I'm positive on it. I really yes. think that that's because every single time he brings it up, it's about the border and immigrants yes. from the border coming over. And then he talks about, yeah, the liberals don't like it when I bring up Hannibal Lecter. But as soon as he says the word asylum, that's when it comes Connect. up. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like this fool thinks asylum is an asylum asylum instead of a, yeah. a, a a political stance so that you can enter a country because you're yeah. you're in trouble. I I, I really un, fully believe that shit because he is dumb as hell. Yeah, anybody who would say to a room full of black reporters, "When did Kamala Harris turn back?" And was all sing songy about it, like he was about to sing and just turn, like he was about to sing a song or something. I don't even. It was so weird. Like if you yeah. all, if you only heard the audio of that, please watch the video because when he talks that that, like you see him almost formulating it in his head to what he's gonna say, and then these idiots who come up after him and repeat it. It's just like you're only just showing how stupid and ignorant you are. Yeah, I mean. Anyway, anyway, we, we had... homonyms are hard, Eric. I don't know if you know this, but you know the people who can't distinguish between there, there, and there. It's the it's the same hey, thing. It's just words. Words in general are hard, my friend. I feel yeah. like words and 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 you know, actual logical thoughts are actually hard to formulate. And and to be honest, you can see it from the Republican response. They don't know what to do. Which yeah. is why I'm I'm very confident. You know, I, I'm really, you know, if you, you see all the predictors, uh, and especially because the momentum is ours, and we're only going to gain more because the VP pick is tomorrow, and then you're going to, we just talked about the Democratic National Convention and how this is the first time that the Democratic Party has connected itself and financially to the Phil Ams for Harris campaign and how awesome that is and how, how good an outreach that is. That's the outreach that we wanted from the democratic party. And now you're getting it actually like in full force. And I think that's uh, partially because of Jamie Harrison, the, the DNC, the head of the DNC. I think he's, mm -hmm. he's really, he's got a 50 state strategy and I think that's always should be the, the way. And I think, Part of the way is the you know our way as well, and and that is you know local politics, you know latching yourself on to uh, Isabel Harado or a uh, or a Robert Bulatow or, or 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 any 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 one of the number of because we're gonna have a few other uh, according to Abby we're gonna line up we're gonna have a few other Filipinos who are looking to become elected officials in this year's election, and we're gonna be interviewing a few more. Uh, would be Philip Phil M elected officials and people running for office currently. So we're going to have more people um, coming to the pod and, and we might even have a forum of, of some people running for office. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about those things because especially with now with um, you know, the vice president uh, Kamala Harris on top of the ticket, 
it's going to lend excitement. I mean, there's re record number of youth registering for the first time so many first time donators so many and i mean she raised 310 million dollars in a month in less than a month really because they did they announced that shit in the middle of the month so it was almost less than like two and a half weeks she made 310 million dollars not to mention all the other you know uh african americans for uh, african women for harris uh, uh, african american men for harris uh, white dudes for harris and all the other offshoot groups and people who that have raised millions of dollars for it like i said it's it's a movement it, it well, feels the, uh, yeah coming up this uh wednesday you, you might have seen this already but the aa nhpi men for kamala is going to be this wednesday and that's getting a yeah, lot I, of I'm, I'm, I'm mad yeah. that they didn't uh, they didn't invite me to speak i'm just kidding i, know. No, I'm not mad I, I saw no, the but names you know of what it was here but we got night is comics there. for harris where they have a whole bunch of stand-up comedians yes. a whole bunch and, and, and I'm, I'm gonna go watch that tonight too and i might i might if i can i might record some of it on the garage band and put it on for podcast why not let's let's do it it is all free media <laughs> but i'm i'm definitely i'm i'm excited about all of this stuff. and like i said it, it it's it feels like 08 but yeah in 2024 it, it feels like the the 2024 version of of 08 because in 08, it was emails and, and, and some tweets maybe, and, and, and you shared something on MySpace or on, on whatever. Because we, we forget that the, back in, in those, those days, it wasn't – the social network wasn't big like that. I think Facebook was around, but it wasn't what Facebook is now. It wasn't meta. You know, it, it, it was a different time. And the way that the, the, the Harris campaign has fully utilized and rode the wave – of the social networks from the coconuts to the, you know, using all of the things that the Republican were using to attack her and quotes that were supposed to make her look bad. And they turn them around to make her look awesome, like making them into songs and dance routines to them. And like all these different viral moments. And it, it's the same way where, well, when will I am did, yes, we can. And put that song into his, Speech and then did that black and white video and everybody cried at the end of it and everybody shared it on their social networks. It's the same, you know, it's the same. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, what you think? We fell out of a coconut tree. You live in the context. In the context. <laughs> the here and now. But, but, but the, the fact that you can, you can, you can quote all that stuff back and even uh, say it to my face. Yeah. That is perfect. Pitch. Perfect campaign i don't know that i've ever have you ever you've been in politics for a long time have you ever seen a launch of a campaign that much better like obama had time he simmered i mean he even teased this on monday night football where he's like i believe the bears are gonna win the super bowl and it, you know like he was teasing us the whole time like he was able to we all knew what he was gonna do but he yeah. teased us for months yeah this was put on Vice President Harris, she, this was, hey, listen, man, I'm too old. You need to do this. Okay. You, you continue to do this. Cool. I, Cause you're the only one who could do it and unify the party. And yeah, you know, when we talked about the, you know, the whole, when I said, there's no way that Biden would step us, you know, the only way is if Biden decided to step aside and then the only way it would work is if he said it, yeah. he said it. And he said it, and he did it in the George Washington esque, you going to yeah. be on Mount Rushmore, yeah. legendary leader kind of way. Yeah, country and first. And immediately endorsed Harris. Like, you want to talk about dark Brandon, eyes yeah. glowing deep dark red and laughing sinisterly. That yeah. is the, the, the best. That, I mean, because that endorsement was perfectly timed because it, everybody else fell in line. Everybody who was telling Biden to step out, they were the first ones to pop out and be like, yeah, you better do this then. Yeah. You better show up for them. Yeah. So you're asking to step they down. were the first ones to endorse. Yeah. The, and cause I was watching it even on Twitter X and you know what else is good threads. Any of you political heads, just so you know, threads is not that bad. It's on the come up. And I am here to say that I am on threads all the time at Eric Estimon comedy. So if you want to follow me there, I'll be posting this podcast and links to this podcast, links to this video, all the stuff on there on threads. Cause I will, I refuse 
to do X. I refuse to do Twitter. I, I, I lost my account years ago when after almost right after he bought it and mm -hmm. took it over. And I'm never going back. I'm yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. No. no. No, I'm cool. I'm cool with YouTube, threads, Instagram, Facebook. I'm all, there's already too many. I don't I, yeah, like I said, you know, in 08, you you know, you sent out an email and you donated a hundred dollars to Obama and it, you you know you you thought you were going viral. You know, it was a very different game. Um, but uh now, you know, now we got now we're streaming live on a podcast where before remember how, you remember that setup where we were like, okay, we're gonna do the zoom and then you get new Rex and all this, and we're gonna do this and and it was a, so, so much different to set up. Now we're doing this every week. Yeah. You know, and, and we're going to be doing live updates from the DNC. And it, it's a very different game that we can play now because of the technology that's, you know, afforded to us. Yeah. So, you know, this is my, because I can't afford to, yeah, my just starting a new job, so I can't afford to donate. And she already got $310 million. So I feel like she don't need my $5 right now. But this is my $5. You know what I'm saying? This is my canvassing. This is this <clears throat> podcast and talking with you about stuff, talking with Abby <laughs> about stuff, bring introducing Melissa Ramoso because Melissa should really be a national figure in the Filipino community. People they really need to know how much she, I mean, she was a former mayor. She's, she's done so much for us as a progressive Filipino community politically and just uh, you know with 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 very little fanfare so for me i'm i'm excited to have her on coming up and then also um michelle amar because it was a funny thing she she said she was dm me her her uh her cell phone she's like so we could coordinate when we were going to meet on Streamyard. and i was like i have your cell phone from when we were doing the karaoke stuff with steve <laughs> and it was a trip because you know that was so long ago that was before he that was at the i think i think i did two karaoke fundraisers for steve mm -hmm. two comedy and in both in in the, in that election i think he lost like he he you know he didn't win so i wasn't a good luck charm for or i think i did the first election and then the second one i did it was more of a i had model majority there and uh uh, one of the Philam writers from Stephen Colbert, I'm, his name escapes me right now because I'm I'm, I'm free thinking, but um, had a bunch of really good New York folks, and that show went off really well. And that was the one that Michelle was a part of, where she was helping organize it, and that one was a really good one. So I think that was the one where he got elected, and there was one where he didn't get elected. So we tried a second time, and the second time he won. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, it, it, it to be a part of those things for me. You know, as a political science minor in college and, a, you know, just a political head, just because that's what I love and I enjoy it. And it's like my sports to be able to be a part of something like that and to be a part of the Stevens campaign. Come on, man. So and we're going to have her on, too, where I, we're going to be interviewing her so, soon as well. So she, those are some guests that are going to be on the podcast. But also, man, we got to keep you and me every Monday. We got to keep yeah. talking about everything. But yeah. we're almost to the end. We're almost to the end. So we should, before Miss Harris, before Vice President Harris selects her vice presidential picks, do you want to do it wish list style or do you want to do it definitively? I will put money on this. This is who is going to be the VP. Who? What? How would you like to classify oh, your... Well, because it's so close and because I've been adamant about this individual, I, I will do it bet style. I will just like, I just, I will go all in for, for one person. Okay. Um, and it's not based on anything except that I just, he makes sense. I like him. Uh, but my all in will be uh, Mark Kelly. Mark mm. Kelly is, is my, my guy. I talked to a few people that was like, like, I was like, I haven't heard from like, just sim like, just, people around me, friends and family, they're like, oh, maybe, whatever. And they, they throw out like the popular names. But when I say Mark Kelly to some folks, and these are people I was just like, not that they're in the know, but they're people who are just like, have thought about it. It gave me some extra confidence to just be like, yeah, okay. Well, you guys are, are saying this, you'll back me up. And I will say a uh, shout out to um, <clears throat> my friend, um, 
uh, uh, Tyler uh, Dos Santos Tam, who is the former chair of the Democratic Party in Hawaii uh, and now a city council member in uh, Honolulu, uh, we were able to have breakfast last week. And he was one of those people that was like, Chris, what do you think about Mark Kelly? I was like, you're the, like, the first or second person to say that without me prompting it. So I was pretty confident. So I'm going to go. My all in will be Mark Kelly from Arizona. Okay, Mark Kelly. Now I've been oh, sorry, so since I clarified, you know my picks. I'm gonna have two. I have my okay. wish list pick, and then I'm gonna have. I'm gonna put money down. This is probably who she's gonna pick because they're two okay. different people. Okay. My wish list pick, and who I I said it last episode. My wish list is Buttigieg, because yes. he's perfect. He's he is your anti Project 2025 ticket with yeah. Harris and Buttigieg. You have a strong multiracial black and Indian, you know, South Asian woman, and you have a strong gay man, you know, who is, veteran. is who veteran. will eviscerate. Yeah. Thank you. Veteran who will eviscerate anyone and including JD Vance on yeah. any debate stage you give him, And in fact, put him, make him the VP and then put him on Fox news every day, you know, because he will eviscerate every single one of those guys and make it so everybody understands the evisceration. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. Like, and it lines him up to be the first LGBTQ president in four to eight years. It just, he becomes the heir apparent for me. So my wish list, please pick him, please, Pete Buttigieg. But if I'm betting money, if I'm saying, hey, here goes my last hundred dollars. I'm about to bet this, and I feel like this is my winner. I'm going Shapiro, Josh Shapiro, oh, and I okay. would go either Shapiro or Kelly because yeah. in both cases they help to solidify the swing state. I don't. Yeah. I don't think Kelly does as much as Shapiro does. Yeah, because I think Shapiro hands you Pennsylvania, and if you mm -hmm. if if they win yeah. Pennsylvania. It's a wrap. Trump yeah. can't. There's no way for Trump to win without Pennsylvania. So if you yeah. if if Shapiro's the VP, it's a wrap, and it's okay because the lieutenant governor in in the case of Pennsylvania, it, it would be the first African American governor, and he's Democrat. Yeah, you know, in the case of places like I think like Bashir. Or in the case of like uh, Tom Cotton, or not Tom Cotton, uh, the, there was another guy in 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 South Carolina or the where where the lieutenant governors were Republicans. So if he were be, to be taken away, you know, I don't like that. Yeah, and also, yeah, no. I kind of don't. That's part of the reason why I pick um, Shapiro over Kelly because I don't want to lose Kelly's Senate seat, and he, he was a hard fought. Even in the last year, I was I think it was elected two years ago. And it was a hard fought. And he's done it twice already. And that having a, you know, and then you, you're about to get Ruben Gallego because he's going to beat Kerry Lake. So now you're going to have two Democratic senators from Arizona. That's, I like that. So yeah. for me, if I'm putting money, I think it's Shapiro. Shapiro, okay. And and uh, it, it's still it's still a crazy, it, it, to be honest, if you if you're thinking if if you're thinking from a perspective of a JD Vance, you know, medieval times a white supremacist perspective, that's also a terrible thing because you know, Josh Shapiro is Jewish. Yeah. So it's still a anti it's still an anti uh project 2025 because and, and, yeah. <laughs> they racist as hell they don't like nobody so it's cool you know what i mean yeah. you, you're gonna yeah. we have a long list of people that the right wing is gonna hate no matter who you pick so um <clears throat> but that, that so so yours you you pick mark kelly and i think it's shapiro i like the but wish list idea. One, huh oh. I was just going, saying, I, I love the wish list idea. You had me thinking, but if I did have one, it would be Buttigieg also anyway. So, so we're agreeing agreeing on the wish list idea, but I think realistically, I think we both have pretty even picks on. I think on it's our, it's it's going to be Kamala's going to decide between those two. I think they're the final two picks, and I think that it's going to be either Kelly or Shapiro, and yeah. Harris Shapiro, Harris Kelly, either one sounds good. Yeah. And I think Harris Buttigieg sounds great. 
because yeah. I've been practicing to say Buttigieg a long time. That, you know how long it took me to learn how to say Buttigieg. I've invested, you guys, in, that game. Yeah. <laughs> I've invested in that shit. <laughs> no, man, but uh, I, you know, it's good to have you back, bro. I, I missed you last week, but I'm glad you were able to get your little snorkeling in and you, you, you're only sick for a few, for a minute and you were able to enjoy your vacation and get, get a few uh, meetings in with uh, some important uh, VIPs in the, in the Filipino American wing of the democratic party. And, you know, and, and again, give everybody uh, the, 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 all the credentials and ways to contact Phil Ams for Harris. If you want to be a part of the movement, if you want to be a part in volunteer, or if you're in Chicago or around in the surrounding areas or plan on being the DNC, you're going to want to, so tell them where to go. Chris, please, yeah. as the final yeah. plug. Yeah, check out uh, at Phil Ams for Harris. Um, make sure to listen to, uh, is it going to be the next episode that you'll have, Melissa? Sunday, yeah, right? probably the next or the following. But we'll, okay, I'll have Melissa know. and Michelle Arm are both, both dignitaries from Phil Ams okay. for Harris, and we'll be interviewing them. And I want to I want to start getting into talking about, and we can talk about this too next week, what to say to your Phil Filipino American Trump supporting relatives. What, how do we debate them and not offend them? Let's, um, let's, let's figure out tactics and ways to do that. And that'll be our, that'll be, our, because I don't want to steal from the native land podcast, but that'll be my call to action. They have, I always have a call to action at the end. So I'm going to try and figure out ways to speak to Filipino Americans and or just people in your life that are still supporting Trump and Trumpism and MAGA and how we can, you know, help them pull them out of the cult and how we can do that. So let, let's, let's, start by, uh, let's start by defining what an asylum is and then we'll go from there. Just make sure that they know how to use that word correctly, other words correctly, but definitely with asylum so they understand uh, they're 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 seeking asylum, but they're not seeking an asylum. They're shout fine. out to Hannibal Lecter, yeah. and also shout out to Freddy Krueger, who was born in an asylum. All of these asylum people just know that it's a different. There's a different. Just like how Kamala Harris can be both South Asian, Indian, and African American, Black, Jamaican, she can be both of those things. We can also. Yes, both and. Yes, we can, and. We can, we can yes, and all of it. <laughs> um, all right. So, and then on the docket, just so you know, uh, shout out to the other national co chairs. I'm going to try to get them on for you to talk to Melissa. We got uh, former co chair Mark Polito, former mayor of Cerritos. We've got, uh, we've got uh, um, uh, Mario. We've got, uh, Genevieve, we've got all these folks. We're gonna line them up to make sure that you can talk to them. Don't forget, don't forget the, the the crown jewel of season two of Miscellaneous and Brown before the election. We're about to sit down with Rob Bunte. If I have to drive up to Sacramento, we're gonna go over there. Yeah, yeah. I want to hang out with that gray haired gentleman and see how he does his stuff, so I can grab some of his swag. Dude is so swaggerific, man. He's awesome. Have him. He's our soccer. Obama. He's so good. I love him. Have them teach you soccer. That's how you'll get them in. Be like, oh, this is a podcast about soccer. And be like, my nope, daughter is kidding. plays soccer too. There you go. I have a biracial daughter who plays soccer too. There you go. Yeah, his his he daughter. Got stuff is, in common, oh, yo. Awesome. There you go. No, but you know, like I really want to have because you know what what Phil Amps, just to kind of wrap it up. Phil Amps, the Phil Amps for Harris event that we went to that online event. You know what it showed me? Part of it is yes. Um, we as Filipino American entertainers should help and lend our platform to these Filipino American uh, politicians and people who are running for elected office. But at the same time, they're stars by themselves and we need to showcase them and tell their story so that more people understand and know what they're doing, what they're sacrificing for us as a community and for us as a collective here in America, as, as, you know, as Filipinos. So it, it really is something that I want to highlight and I want to showcase 
here on this podcast, even if it is, you know, even if, whatever amount of views we get, I want, I want to keep, you know, pressing and showing that we can be a part of all facets of this wonderful country we live in. Yeah. And you've done, you've done a great job of, of just role modeling that, right? I mean, like everybody can use their voice in different ways and you choose to do it in a way where it's like, I'm educating you. I'm letting you know there's still unity in this. Politics is important because our ancestors didn't come here just for us to keep, you know, working in the fields, keep joining the Navy, being nurses. Those are all great and noble. I mean, my parents were in the Navy and my mom was a nurse. It's like, these are important. At the same time, they did, they do this, they did this so we could pursue what we want to do, what we dream to do. And, and by having these platforms, it reminds us, you know, it's not just one, two or three things that you could pursue. You could do whatever you want and have fun with it. And you've been proof of that. So, so thank you for making this happen. And uh, real quickly, uh, I don't know if Melissa is going to kill me for sharing this, but one little secret I need to share uh, when we have our final celebration of the DNC for the Filipino, uh, we may or may not, but most likely we'll have a celebrity performance. And that's all I'll say. But we will have somebody from our, our community. You guys even will... haven't asked me yet. I'm more than willing to perform. <laughs> you just got to give me a little more time. I mean, I'm starting a new job. job you just yeah. got to tell me. Oh, wait, no, I'm not really a celebrity. It's okay. So we're talking to the airline. We're talking to your airline right now. Just like, hey. Can we borrow him for just one day and uh, you're going to come uh, play the banjo for us, right? Is, is that what you're going to do? No, I don't know how to play the banjo. I wish I could. I wish I could. I, I, that's the one. You know how, you, okay, Filipino kids who are listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, when your parents say, practice your piano or you're going to regret it when you're older, guess what? I yeah. fucking regret it and it sucks because they were right. Same. I chose tennis over piano and I suck at tennis and I don't know the piano at all anymore. So I just double no talent for me. I'm lucky I'm on here. I'm lucky I can still play tender love. <laughs> I'm going to buy a piano though. I'm going to make some money doing stand up and podcasting and I'm going to buy a grand piano. I'm going to put it in my small ass house and it's going to take up the whole living room and I don't give a shit. <laughs> All right, brother. We'll see you next Monday and stay tuned here again. Miscellaneous and Brown. This is episode what? 24. 24. Episode 24. Listen to the past episodes. We have, we interview a whole bunch of different people and I'm going to pretty soon, if not this week, probably next week, I am going to be launching the one, two productions, Patreon where we will have exclusive interviews with people from the cannabis community, people from the Filipino American political community and exclusive interviews where you won't get those on the YouTube or the Instagram. You'll only be able to get those on the Patreon. And that will be coming up probably next week. If I get off my lazy ass and set all of it up, but we'll see. Very cool. How exciting. Right on, man. Well, I'll see you soon, Chris, and uh, we'll talk next Monday when another crazy catastrophe happens in this crazy on it. That's political us. climate we're going. But, yo, this is Miscellaneous and Brown, where you get a politics and pop culture from a flipped perspective. I'm Eric Esteban. This is Chris Mateo. We'll see you next Monday, y'all. Peace. Peace. I don't think you want any problems, but you got one, here we go. You can see the size is colossal, look at the way she make the thing go. Make it gyrate, make it shake like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake, ayy. Make it gyrate, make it shake like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake, ayy. It's summertime, starting up a heat wave, and now all weekend, hardly slept in three days. Whoever's driving the car is a DJ, when it's Q York, better pump that bass. The dominance is obvious, I guillotine, heads roll Everywhere I go, I rep Philippines Found my way, turn a maze to amazing Infinite flows discovered in an ancient spaceship I see things before they happen, visionary Bury me inside a studio at the cemetery My modus operandi not monetary No a Lazarus, the holy one at the monastery So let me see your cute, plus the wide, that's the crew I'm a giant, how I group, still connected to my roots Rhymes, I kick it like Bruce, got me feeling like Zeus Standing tall like Manute, to reach this level, need a boost 
Cinematic reflection in the mirror, Max. With the pros, I'm proliferating. She said my syntax sounds so scintillating. Flavor manics on the beat, savory. Being scared, still doing it, that's bravery. Hunger turn us into savages. Ain't nobody give us nothing, had to do it alone, without a loan. Like North on Queens, Aquafina had the shell toe. Adidas used to hang with the drug dealers. Been doing this since cassette taste. And my Walkman writing rhymes on the subway. Traditions I carry on, hip hop scholar. In the street, science, raw diamonds, have a final With the stars in alignment, got the youth to the truth On the tree of knowledge, squeeze forbidden fruit And made it juice I don't think you want any problems But you got one, here we go You can see the size is colossal Look at the way she make the thing go Make it gyrate, make it shake Like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake hey. Make it gyrate, make it shake Like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake I just wanna dance all night, wanna dance all night, wanna dance all night with you. I just wanna dance all night, wanna dance all night, wanna dance all night with you.